Hey, Connor, welcome to an actor to spare us. How are you doing, brother? I'm great. Thank you. How are you? Ah, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm even better now that I'm seeing you, man. Your, your performance oh, thank in you so much. Heartstopper was uh, heart wrenching, pun intended. And man, you, you, you know, I, I, I hope you don't mind, but you know, you're, you're just 18 and you have a career of like a 72 year old actor. I mean, it, oh, it's so incredible, much. man. I mean, the, the theater work you've done, the film and the TV, I mean, I, I'm, I'm 32, man. And I, man, you're where I hope to be in 10 years. <laughs> well, no, thank you. I mean, I, you know, I've had a very, very lucky, lucky childhood and sort of hit all the, the right sort of, you know, right place, right time kind of thing. So I've been very, very fortunate in my, my upbringing, I suppose. Yeah. But you know, it doesn't happen if the work isn't good, man, and you're doing amazing work and I'm really thank excited so to much. talk to you about it, but in order to get to the work, can we start at the beginning and, where did you grow up, man? So I've grown up, so born and raised in uh, in South London, in a town called Croydon. Uh, literally born here, haven't left at all. So, um, yeah, I mean, I've been here since 2004. Wow. That, when you say 2004, that's when you were born, you mean? That's or? when I was born, yeah. Wow. And so for, you know, people listening, just to kind of explain to the Americans that that are listening, like, you know, so West London is kind of like incredibly expensive, right? Sure. And East London is kind of like artsy, right? Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. North London is like where Top Boy takes place, right? Isn't? Yeah, I think yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so South London is very much the kind of. I mean, South London. There are loads of different parts of South London. So I'm quite south. Um, the, where I'm from in Croydon, they sort of. They actually call it the the Cronks. It has a nickname. So it's the I sort of that. London version. Sounds like a great London band. Of the Bronx. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, it's the London version of the Bronx, uh, is what they they supposedly call it. So it's sort of this weird land where some Londoners would say that it's not really a part of London because we have things like trams. We have a tram line in Croydon, which oh, wow. you don't really get anywhere else in in london just um, for the city itself right not to london obviously. yeah yeah well no it, it just goes through croydon and sort of goes to other places in south london like wimbledon um but yeah i mean it's a very it's it's not the most londony place but then it also is very londony if that makes sense it's yeah. got a very i mean it's it's what i think of as south london just because i obviously have grown up it but yeah that's incredible. And just curious, how far from like on the tube would that be to central London? Well, on the train, it's about half an hour on the train, maybe 20 minutes at times. OK, so it really is central. a Bronx equivalent then, especially. Yeah. With, yeah. Wow. That's incredible. Well, well, tell me, man, what was it like growing up there? Are, are your parents artists? Well, my parents are both in, in advertising. So um, that's art. They sort of, yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. They're, they're very much, especially my dad is, is more on that, that sort of creative side of, of advertising as well. Um, I mean, it's definitely a, a different world to the, the industry that I'm in, but it, it does mean that they both have a kind of understanding of, of certain things in, in my industry. Um, yeah, I mean, I've grown up, like I say, in Croydon. I mean, I've, you know, I've had a great childhood, I'd say, you know, I think until I was about seven, I hadn't really touched acting at all. It was just sort of a very, very normal childhood. Um, were you, were your parents you know, curating? Like, were they introducing you to cinema and like, obviously the West ends there? Like, were you going to, I mean, I know that's really young to be going to place, but do you have memories of like, I feel like at that age, I was more like, it was more like the kind of musicals and things like that. I, I distinctly remember going to see, you know, Mary Poppins and the Lion King in the West end. And things oh, like that. Nice. so, it was a lot of those kind of things. It wasn't the sort of hardcore, you know, plays or musicals or anything like that, but it was, it was the, the good sort of family classics. Um, and, you know, I watched, we always were a big sort of film family, you know, we, we, we had like a movie night every Friday night where we all used to watch a film. And, you know, I think at that point it was very much a lot of the time it was the sort of younger films, um, you know, for younger audiences, cause I was still a kid. Um, but I think, you know, my dad's a massive film fan. You know, we all very much love you know everything to do with the arts, really. So, yeah, I mean, I, I've always been sort of surrounded by film, TV and, and theatre. But it wasn't until I was about seven when when I was really introduced to, to that kind of world. 
and and talk to me about how that happened you know was was it like something classic like drama school you took young or or like a summer camp or how did the whole thing unfold I mean, to be honest it was kind of a mix of the two so i went to this thing called this place called stagecoach and it was like a a saturday sort of couple hours on a saturday you basically did like you know the the classic sort of acting singing and and dancing and it was just for sort of young kids especially um i mean i think my parents really did it because i was quite shy a lot of the time so i think they kind of did it to try and get me open you up a bit yeah 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 so i i I did that and they had this agency um called the stagecoach agency and i i think just by chance i was signed up for that and I did a year with them. I, I had a year's kind of contract. And I did one commercial. I did a, a an Xbox commercial. Uh, it was like a Christmas Xbox commercial. Um, and I think it was going to go out in Brazil or something like that. And you This know, is your I first remember, gig? This was my first gig. It was, wow. it was the first audition I ever did. And I got it. And I thought, oh, God, this is easy then. Um, so then, you know, I was just so so excited to do it. It was a tiny little role in this, in this little little commercial. You know, I just found it fun. So then I, um, you know, I, I then tried to get signed up to a, a different agency, um, uh, another agency, which was sort of still a kind of kids agency for like, you know, we did a lot of commercials and things like that. So I did, you know, everything from Sainsbury's to KFC to, you know, everything, all those kind of commercials, which was great. You know, I was just having fun really at the age of kind of seven. So it was um, commercials that got you started. It was yeah, completely started with commercials. Wow! Yeah. And and were they sending you out for TV shows yet, or you didn't have a a theatrical okay. agent yet? No, I started doing I started doing a um sort of auditions for things like the odd episode of, uh, do you know, Casualty. I've I've heard of it. I don't know yeah, it, but so yeah, I, yeah. I, think, I think loads of if you ask like most sort of British actors, a lot of them will say that they've either been in an episode of Casualty or an episode of. East Enders it's, or something like that. It's like our it's law and order, things. right? Yeah, but yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, but yeah. It's yeah. Like, so it's 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 such a sort of staple in British television. So I got an episode of that, I think. That was one of my first TV jobs. Um, and I was buzzing. And then yeah, I think it just sort of progressed from there. So then I did a um a CBBC show, which was like just a sort of uh, it's the children's BBC. So I did a you know a a couple seasons of a show on that and then you know at that point I was thinking oh, okay this is I've hit big time like this is this is pretty big um yeah it just sort of slowly built up until I got my first film at the age of nine I think wow. um when I was uh yeah when I was nine it was called Get Santa so it was a it was a Christmas film by Warner Brothers and you know that for me was just like the most exciting thing in the world I was nine years old I loved Christmas. Like Christmas was my favorite time of year. Still believing in Santa at this point, or did the movie ruin it for you? Actually, I got say at that point, <laughs> it's very embarrassing because at that point I didn't actually believe in Santa because you know, I mean, depending on who's listening to this, I, I don't know. But at, yeah. at that point, I'd sort of, I'd sort of thought, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I, I think my parents are always disappearing in the night. You know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, it was also just. I think for me, it was like watching Christmas films. And in these Christmas films, all the adults, you know, all the adults go, oh, yeah, but Santa doesn't exist. So I was thinking, oh, do all adults think this? So I think that's what made me clock. I mean, that's a completely different you know, topic. That's a different debate to have. Yeah. But um, by that point, I was, yeah. I, but my, I remember my, my dad actually told me that he spoke to everyone on the set before um, I got on set for Get Santa. And he told everyone to just not spoil the fact that Santa didn't exist because he thought oh. that I still believed, which is adorable. But I also I'm glad he didn't tell me that because I would have been absolutely mortified. <laughs> and, uh, Our like parents, that. man, they're great at um, that. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, I mean, that was that was so, so exciting. And, and you know, I was lucky enough that after that, that film came out, I went to a screening Um and uh kid do you mind moving there's a sunbeam coming in yes, here there you go. go perfect 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 is that better yeah so much better yeah yeah you yeah, know so i i literally remember there was a screening for get santa and i was so so excited um and i was this nine-year-old boy i was so 
just full of full of energy and I was sat next to this um lovely lady who I had a chat with and I just started talking to her because I was so excited about the film uh, and then it turned out that she um she worked for this big agency in London called um Independent Talent Group yeah uh, and her name was Rebecca Pumphrey and and then essentially soon after that I got an offer from Independent to you know to represent me and I think just from that point you know that was just such a bit I mean it's so much down to just like fate I think that I was sat next to to her at that point because you know who knows what would have happened after that if I hadn't if I hadn't met her there um because yeah then I suddenly I was signed up with you know one of the best agents in the country and you know I just that really unlocked a lot for me. So, I, you know, I, I owe a lot to, to doing that film when I was nine and, and going to that, that screening as well. Talk to me, because you mentioned your parents, you know, sent you to Stagecoach to open you up, mm. and th- let alone doing that there, and then getting on commercial sets, and then a movie set. Do you feel like you really did open up? Yeah, I mean, I think to some extent, I think for me, I've always been one of those people who's, I think I'm always going to be a bit of an introvert at heart. I think yeah. I'm always going to be one of those, you know, I, I'm, I'm never going to be the person who sort of walks into a room and, and starts being to everyone. I think that, that I, you know, I wish I could be, but I don't think I ever will be. Um, but I do think that it gave me a lot more um, confidence in myself, I think. And it also did um, allow me to understand that, you know, I feel a lot more comfortable either on a stage or on, uh, on screen I feel like that's uh, it was almost not quite a safe space for me but it, it, it did sort of give me that confidence um, which was you know which was great so I do think that especially over the years over my sort of career I have sort of progressed in my comfort you know on screen and on stage so yeah and and doing the Santa film you know was that just a ball just being, you know, young and getting to do a movie about Christmas. I mean, Christmas came yeah. early, literally, you know? I mean, yeah, completely. I, for me, it was literally just, and you know, that everyone knew it was my first film. So everyone was, you know, spoiling me. They used to buy me like these big Lego sets. Oh, like, man. You know, on my first day, I got a big Lego set. On my last day, I got a big Lego set. On my birthday, like, you know, everything was just, um, yes. Yeah. So basically, it was just this dream for me, like, you know, as a nine-year-old, they were spoiling me, you know, I loved Christmas, so to be able to do a Christmas film, I was such a big, you know, fan of these Christmas films, you know, The Grinch and everything, all, all those kind of Christmas films. So for me, it was just like the perfect scenario. And I thought that, you know, my life had been made right there. Um, and yeah, I mean, it was, like I said earlier, like I do owe a lot of my career to, to that film because it unlocked a lot for me, you know, and in, in obviously just directly unlocked, you know, me getting a, an amazing agent as well. Yeah. That's incredible, man. And I'm, I'm so glad you had that experience. And once you signed with that agency, was there a discussion with your parents about like, okay, I, I'm really going to go for this now, you know, because I know it can be tricky with school and having to, you know, have a tutor on set. And, and also don't, when you're under 18, I don't know if it's the same in the UK, one of your parents has to be with you, right? Yeah, you have to, yeah. or, that or a chaperone. Yeah, Got it. so it okay. was either, I mean, honestly, like, you know, I did definitely have a conversation with my parents, but I think for me, yeah, after Get Santa, I think that was the point where I was like, okay, yeah, maybe this is something that I could actually do for a living and and do sort of in my life. And I, that was an extremely exciting thing. But yeah, I mean, I think that that was an important decision to make at that point, because for me, the amount of, you know, stress that being a child actor can cause can be very, very, you know, heavy, you know, yeah. because even just in terms of school, I think that it can have a massive effect on your education. Um, you know, I haven't suffered too badly, I don't think, but I have missed, you know, so, so much school over the last, you know, 10 years, really. And I wouldn't, like, for me, I wouldn't be able to commit all that time missing all that school if it wasn't something that I really wanted to do, yeah. you know, for my career, for for the rest of my life, really. You know, I wouldn't have been comfortable to sort of slightly sacrifice my grades and slightly, 
you know, sort of miss out on, on certain school experiences if it wasn't really what I wanted to do. So I think that it was a good decision back at, you know, back when I was, you know, nine or 10 to really give it a go. Cause you know, it was, it quite quickly became my dream to, to be able to do it for a living. And I think that, you know, every, every step that I take that's closer to that is just a real, I mean, an honor, you know, as an actor. Yeah. That's beautiful, man. Very well put. I'm curious when you did that film, did that answer the question, okay, yeah, I, I really want to do this, you know, or was it, was it the moment of meeting her and getting signed that like, oh, this is an opportunity where I can do it. You know, where did the, I guess, where did the activation moment of like, this is going to be it for me? I mean, I think that's the thing, like, especially as a child actor, everything feels like, you know, every step that you take feels like the biggest thing in the world. Yeah. So, you know, when I landed Get Santa, for me, I'd like, you know, that was the craziest it was ever going to get. Like, it it could not get bigger than this. It could not get better. You know, it was a Warner Brothers film. Suddenly I got signed by Independent. And then that was like, okay, you know, I didn't know anything about agents at that point. But, you know, I was being told, like, this is one of the, the best ones in the country. You know, they represent some amazing people. So for me, it was just like, wow. Like, yeah, I mean, it, it can't get better than this. So I'm not sure if there really was like an activation point, but that I think around that time was definitely the time where I was like, yeah, this could be something that I could do, you know, and, and, and this isn't just a dream anymore. Like I could actually, you know, do something with it, you know? And I think that especially being a child actor, I always sort of joke around that, that being a child actor, in my experience, I didn't really have to be that good of an actor you know, I just had to sort of stand around and look cute and say my lines. And it was, it was, it was, it was, it was a nice little bit of fun. It was when, you know, the cuteness started to fade a little bit. And then, you know, you have to actually sort of, um, you know, learn how to act, which I think is, is, was something that I definitely experienced. But yeah, I, I think that was definitely the point. Maybe it was after Get Santa came out and we did the premiere and, you know, it was a, a magical day for me. I think that was when I thought, okay, maybe, maybe this is, maybe this is something that I can do. That's beautiful. I appreciate the insight to that. And having had a lot of friends and people that have been on the show that started as child actors, you know, when a film like that caliber, you know, Warner Brothers, biggest studio in the world came Mm -hmm. out, was it difficult for you and your friends to see you in this film? You know, because like I had a lot of friends then that, that, you know, got kind of bullied at school or all of a sudden everyone wanted to be friends with them, you know, like, mm. did you encounter any of that? I mean, for sure. I mean, I mean, firstly, I've never been one to like enjoy watching myself. I always am yeah. very sort of, you know, scrutinize Same. myself if I watch <laughs> myself. So, yeah. So, so it's, it's, it's a difficult experience, but I think that, I mean, luckily I didn't have too much sort of negative reaction to the film. You know, there wasn't, and there wasn't much bullying or anything like that. I mean, maybe the odd sort of like teasing and things like that, but but nothing too crazy. I think that I definitely have over the years experienced that that thing of having a lot of people suddenly having a bit more interest in you, and you know, maybe not even necessarily wanting to be friends with you, but wanting to maybe associate themselves slightly with you, yeah. or or some people some people you know might talk to you that that probably wouldn't have spoken to you if they didn't if you hadn't have done what what yeah. you've done. And I think you know after that first film it was less so but definitely that has has happened a lot in the last few years I'd say well yeah I know how hard that is man and and I mean you've done so uh, you're such a great guy I can just tell I'm curious when when that you know independent talent group when you signed with them what kind of things did they start you know because it's a huge agency did you start going in for like leads of films or you know television shows well yeah it was like suddenly it did unlock like a different sort of caliber of work that 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 I hadn't really experienced before it was suddenly work you know going for a lot more just a lot more interesting jobs um and even if it wasn't like for leads and things I, I spent a lot of my career doing sort of playing the younger version of of of, an, of a character you know playing uh-huh. young you know I think before Heartstopper, the biggest like, credit um, that I had was was in Rocket Man, and I obviously played a young, young Elton John in that, um, 
which was amazing. But I, I think I spent a lot of my career doing those kind of jobs. But it did allow me, it was great because I slowly was sort of building up, um, you know, momentum as an actor and and sort of getting progressively bigger roles. Um, but yeah, it was a lot of these sort of, you know, supporting roles and major roles that were, you know, really fun. I mean, I think the main experience that I had was just, I really used it as a time to learn from the actors that I was working with. Yeah, I'm a very, very, very big believer in in learning from experience and learning um, on the job. So when you get the opportunity to work with these amazing actors, you know, that I've had the opportunity to work with, I think a lot of the time I won't even ask them. I've, I'm, I've never been one to sort of ask questions because um, I, I would feel that that would be almost, you know, invasive perhaps a bit invasive yeah Yeah, they're at work i I wanted them to be able to focus on their job like i don't want to be asking them questions like it's an interview but you know it's i i a lot of the time we just let them speak you know just let them work and let them act and sort of watch and pick up on things and i think that's that's a big part for me of of how i've sort of developed as an actor is just you know, learning from experience, watching other actors work. And, and also, I mean, honestly, also just watching other films and TV and yeah. theatre and sort of, and taking inspiration and, and sort of pointers from, from those, I think is a big thing. If you don't mind, you know, talk to me about auditioning because no matter what age you are, it's so hard for actors. And like, you know, I, I'm sure you remember, you know, when we used to actually get to go in the room and mm. now that isn't so true anymore. But being young, was that hard for you to to go into this room and, and have to audition for, you know, I, I, I don't think I could have done that at 10, 11, you know? I, yeah, it was always nerve wracking. I think I was always and never felt like 100 percent confident in the um, in the audition room. Uh, especially as a, a sort of more introverted kid. But, you know, I think that it definitely got easier because you sort of learn to almost almost separate yourself from, like, it's. A, I, I almost had, especially when I was growing up, I had this sort of more confident persona that yeah. I had um, for when I was going to auditions and when I was working. Um, and that did allow me to sort of, you know, pretend to be confident and pretend to be extroverted and, acting exercise of its own almost yeah exactly yeah yeah. so it was I think that was really helpful and 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 it allowed me to be a lot more confident and just do my best in these auditions but I think yeah it was definitely scary at first and it it did get better I think since we've had to suddenly do all of our auditions online and things like that I think that suddenly you know was a shock because the other day I've you know recently I've been having to obviously do uh, just the odd in-person audition and they just seem oh really they're they're back yeah. in the uk a little bit yeah, yeah. The odd one, i mean for example for heartstopper we had the vast majority of the auditions were completely zoom yeah. and i only had two in person or one in person audition before i actually got cast Ke- a chemistry I read off. i imagine or yeah well, yeah what, yeah so i had i had one chemistry read with them um, with with karina brown who plays um tara in heartstopper um and we had that chemistry read and then I got offered the uh, offered the role and then we had one more chemistry read with um with sort of the main ensemble cast um but before that it was completely zoom but that that last chemistry read that I did was was pretty nerve-wracking because it was like it was I had to almost learn how to do that again learn how to do the walking into a room full of people sort of who were about to watch you act yeah. uh, I think that was a very interesting thing but yeah I think I think the auditioning process I've got to say I do much prefer auditions to self-tapes yeah you know, me I, too I find self-tapes so draining and so so I tiring I fully agree and yeah. and and before we jump into Heartstopper I do want to talk to you about all your other amazing credits I mean sure talk, talk to me about you know theater you know when you have those kind of films you know it, it it can be really hard Broadway West end getting in. And so at Mm. what point, you know, did, was it independent that threw auditions your way or did they ask you, do you, do you want to do theater, you know, or were you still doing stagecoach and singing and dancing during all this time? I wasn't actually, I, I, by that point, I think I'd given it up, but um, yeah, no, I think basically independent just sort of, sort of through the odd, the odd 
primarily I was auditioning for TV and film, but then they would throw the odd, you know, um, play or musical. Uh, and I would, you know, I think I was keen to audition for a lot of things. I think the idea of doing theatre always scared me a little bit, especially at that point, because I hadn't really done any. Um, but then I, I think I got my first play, major play, when I was around, probably around 11, I'd say. Wow. Um, so young. And Is this the one that yeah, was at I mean, Don Mar Warehouse? Yes, it was at Don Mar. Oh, it was, did uh, did you have Home an idea before. of how iconic that, you know, venue is? I and... was, I, I did know, like, you know, my parents were just going, I mean, this is insane. Yeah, because that was my debut. Um, and it was, I mean, it was unbelievable because it is such a prestigious theatre and it's such a, like, gorgeous little theatre. Um, and, you know, it was a, a play called Welcome Home, Captain Fox. It was a comedy um, you know, I had a role called Small Boy, which sounds like it's a like a tiny role. I mean, it was it was it was you know a bit more significant than it sounded, but it was it was just really fun. Like it was a really fun play and really funny, and it was enjoyable to do. And you know, for me, it was a completely different world, and it and it is a different it's a different craft, it's a different skill. How did that feel na navigating that? You know, because like we just kind of mentioned, you know, we both like in person auditions because. The feedback is live. So it's the same thing yeah. in theater. You know, what did that feel like from going on these sets to like this? I'm going to find out, you know, from the audience whether this is working or not. I mean, I think that's the most interesting thing. I think that I do love um, TV and film and I probably will stay as a, a sort of naturally TV and film kind of actor. Yeah. But I do just, I think that the rush that you get from being on stage um is otherworldly because it never quite you know, every night is different you know because you're completely reacting to the audience some sometimes the audience just you know will laugh at everything you say and it's just it's just hot and everything feels great and you know it, it's perfect it's a perfect night and then sometimes you'll say the first joke and no one laughs yeah. and then it's almost like that's it's different every laughs. night yeah Exactly. And you have to almost mold it slightly to the audience and just see how they feel. And, and you know, if the audience are, are, are hot and, and really on it, then, you know, that sometimes the show will just, it will be twice the, twice the speed just because everyone's energy is just right there. Uh, and I think that's one of the most amazing things about theatre. And, and like I say, you know, the, the buzz, the rush that you get, you know, after, after you know, walking out that stage door, it's just... It's there's nothing like it for me, and every single night it was like that. You know? And you were doing all eight shows. No, well, I was because obviously the nature of being a child actor. So yeah, they switch uh, them out for, for school, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So for that play, I believe I was sharing with uh, two other actors. So it was the three of us, um, as I was about eleven. So I would probably perform twice, maybe three times a week. Which, I mean, I've got to say, like, that was for me the one downside of being a, a child actor in the theatre. Because I felt, although, you know, it meant that you formed these great relationships with the people who were, you know, with the other kids who were playing playing your role. Yeah. It did almost feel like, for me, the two negatives were, it sort of took you out of the character for a little bit. You know, there's something about playing the role every night that sort of allows you to really stay in there. Yeah. Um, and keep that, keep that sort of element of the character you know tight um whereas if you're sort of doing it every other night or you know twice or three times a week it can slightly take you out of the character which i found frustrating um and i think the other thing that i found frustrating was you know the sort of slightly competitive nature of of that almost yeah. you know when you're playing the same role as 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 two or three other actors and you know one actor might get press night and then one the other one gets opening night and the other one gets you know uh the final night it, yeah. it it does mean that there's almost this slight sense of competition which i felt slightly frustrating as well i i would have loved to just you know have the role and been able to just just do it you know yeah. like everyone else um so i i'm now i'm sort of legally able to do a, a role on my own i would love to go back to the theater at some point um, well, let's and, do a play. Come to, come to America. We'll do Broadway together. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Sounds good. I, I, I'm curious, man. As you you know, 
you know, one of the things I felt like as a kid, and I wasn't even working at the capacity you were, is like you, and I, I don't know how you feel, but at a certain age, I felt much more mature than I was. And yeah, one of the things I always wanted was to be taken seriously by adults. And especially you working in projects of this caliber and, you know, this incredible lore, were you like, were people treating you, you know, like as an adult you felt like, or was that hard to, I think that, yeah, I think that's a very, very good point. I It was something that I, I always struggled with as a child because I felt that, especially in my teenage, my sort of young teenage years, I felt that I was was a lot older than I actually was. Um, because, you know... And being in the of, business, and you mature so fast, yeah, you it, know? because it forces you to, you know. Yeah. You, for example, you know, when I was doing a TV show, at, I can't remember what age, I must have been about um, nine or ten and I was in, you know, I was shooting in Wales and obviously I live in London. So you'd spend, you'd be spending you know, weeks at a time in a hotel room, you know, without your parents. My parents were back in London and it did force you to sort of mature a little bit. And I think that it's had an effect on me, you know, even now that I get on with people who are older than me a bit more than I get on with people my age. Um, and I think that's just a natural thing. I think that something that I felt that I felt that the most when I was doing a film called um, Slaughterhouse Rules. I think that came out back in 2018, probably. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I was filming that and that had some wonderful, wonderful actors of around the kind of age of in their early twenties, you know, starring Asa Butterfield, who oh, was yeah. a massive, you know, he was a massive role model for me when I was, you know, growing up as a child actor. Um and you know, to so be able working working with him was 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 so cool. But that job in particular, so much of the main cast were in their early twenties. But I still very much felt like I was a part of that group, like I was a part of that cast. And you know, they used to joke that I was more mature than they were. Um, <laughs> you know, um, but I thought that you know, I think that is very much a a result of growing up in the industry. And growing up as an actor and I it was definitely always something that I wanted I always wanted to be treated as an adult and I think that's one thing one thing that I found frustrating was for example I don't know what it's like in the US but in the UK we had certain laws of if you hadn't done your GCSEs which are exams that you do when you're about 16 so before you're 16 um you have to have like we mentioned a chaperone those are like our SATs I believe right yeah 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 yeah. Yeah, pretty much yeah I think so so we, um, you know, we, it meant that I had to have a chaperone and I could only work nine and a half hours a day. And I had to do a certain amount of tutoring a day and everyone else was working their 12 hours, uh, you know, 12 hours a day. And I, for me, that was like, I would get so frustrated because yeah. we'd be doing this really, you know, great scene. We'd be having so much fun um, on sort house rules, even for example. And then suddenly, you know, the AD would just go, oh yeah, Kit, you haven't got any, any more hours today. So we got to take you home. We got, you got to go home. And I just remember just being dragged off set so many times, just being like, I'm like, I can do this. I can do yeah, so many more hours. Like yeah. I'm here, which I, I felt so, you know, felt so frustrating. So how did know. you balance that? Cause you, you mentioned earlier, you know, doing school was important to you, but I, I you know, as a, as an actor and, and wanting to work, I could see how you could, you know, I mean, nobody likes homework, how you can start resenting, yeah. like, let me work, you know, I'll, I'll get to this later. You know, how did you exactly. balance that, man? Well, I think as well, because I, it did, you know, obviously I had a tutor uh, if I was missing school. So that was always a little bit helpful. But I always also found that frustrating because, you know, you'd be doing a scene with um, with an adult and then it would be a really intense scene or something like that. And then you'd all step off. They'd say, OK, take 15 minute break. You know, this this fully grown adult would then be able to go and have a, a cup of tea or a yeah. you know, biscuit, whatever. Go to and the trailer, to, get a massage. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'd, I'd have to then go and do math homework. And I found yeah. that so, so annoying, you know, to, to put it bluntly, I found that so annoying. So, you know, doing Heartstop, Heartstop was actually the first um, job that I've done after sort of being a, an adult in the industry. So, I found it so like, I just haven't taken it at all for granted being able to work the 12 hours. It's yeah. tiring for sure. Like, you know, it's not, it's not like I'm some superhero who can do it without sort of breaking a sweat, but 
I do really appreciate it because I wouldn't have it any other way. Really. Yeah, man. You're such, such a great, I love what you're saying, brother. You're great. Such a great guy. Tell me, you, you know, much. because you know, I, we all at some point, you know, in our lives, even if you're not an actor, kind of find a mentor that perhaps, you know, shepherded us and, and helps us along to become, you know, the men and the women and the individuals that we want to be, especially like given all these amazing acting opportunities. And you mentioned Asa on any of these, did you find someone that kind of became your constant that, you know, you would check in with to kind of stay sane or if you had questions or were your parents fulfilling that role already? I mean, I think that I've always had like, you know, plenty of people in my life who have been really, really supportive and, you know, been a, a support system for me. I think that Asa has been has been great. You know, when when I got announced for Heartstopper, he messaged me and um, congratulated me. And, you know, which is sort of I, I, that I really appreciated it, uh, appreciated that, especially him being a, a Netflix actor who's sort of had so much success with sex education. Yeah. You know, I think that that he. Um, that support was really, really helpful. And, and just, it was just a, a lovely gesture as well. Um, but I think that there are people even outside of the industry who, even if they don't understand the industry quite as well as I do, they have an understanding of just general kind of, you know, what's healthy for people and what's right and what's wrong. And, and therefore they've always been there to guide me. So I've had people in my personal life as well as people in the industry who have been, you know, sort of helping me through, especially in a time like this, because, you know, since Heartstopper came out, it's been a real whirlwind. So it's good to have people around you who are sort of looking out for you. And and before we jump into Heartstopper full throttle, mm-hmm. I'd, I'd love to talk to you about Rocket Man and his dark materials. Sure. What was it like being part of projects that, you know, were that just so well received and, and, and global, you know? I mean, how, how did you feel? Because like one of the things... I ask actors on the show often, and it's something that we all find at different times in our life is finding your voice slash confidence. Mm. You know, do you feel like in these plays and in Slaughterhouse, like, did you, did you feel like you had your voice and your confidence or is it something you still feel like you're finding? Like, you know, being in Rocket Man and his dark materials, I can, I can only imagine, you know, how, how dedicated and, and just, sure of yourself you have to be to 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 rise to the occasion i mean i think for rocket man in particular um so i met the director of rocket man dexter fletcher on a on a commercial actually about a year before we did a commercial in for b and q in south africa we spent about a week together in south africa cape Um, town yeah in cape town Ah, i love cape town yeah it was wonderful and so you know i think dexter and i hit it off immediately and it didn't require much, much acting, to be honest, that, that commercial. But I think Dexter realized that, you know, he enjoyed working with me and I obviously enjoyed working with him. And it was just a really, you know, we had a lot of fun over that week. So then when it came up to, you know, auditioning for for his movie and, you know, talking to him about it. And I think he was very keen for me to play the role. And, you know, I was obviously just so you know, I was so keen to do it. I think Elton John's amazing. And did you get to like, meet Elton? I did. I met him at, uh, at the Cannes Film Festival um, wow. in 2019, I think, which was unbelievable. I think it was one of the greatest. Did you walk the carpet with him? Life. Yes, we did the photo call. We did the, I met him on the photo call um, uh, in front of all the cameras. I think there's a video of him crossing the whole group to go and give me a hug. And that was the first wow. time I ever spoke to him um and yeah that was amazing and then we did the uh yeah we walked the carpet and then there was an after party and he was playing on the piano and it was just a surreal surreal night but yeah I mean I think that that whole experience was just so incredible I mean it was daunting as well you know I'd never I've always sung a little bit but I I was never confident enough to sing in front of anyone else it was always in the shower you know it was always at home and my parents were sick of me singing, but I would never sing outside <laughs> the house. So for me, it was a big step to be even singing in auditions was was really scary for me. Um, so it was a big step to to obviously sing in the film and, and sing at Abbey Road Studios. It was like it was a pinch me moment for for sure. But um, yeah, I think that Rocket Man definitely more so than his dark materials i think his dark materials has been a wonderful experience um it's it's definitely a completely different world 
doing something like Rocket Man because, you know, I'm just in a booth. I'm in a sort of a, yeah. a little black room, you know, for for a few hours every, you know, every once in a while. And so I'm you just, rehearsed for a long time for Rocket Man. For Rocket Man, we spent about I probably spent about two weeks of of, of rehearsing for Rocket Man. I'd say okay. because it was so I did um, obviously some rehearsing of the scenes, but then mostly it was singing prep i had this wonderful uh singing and piano coach called uh, michael roberts who who was very supportive and, and really helped me out um and helped me bring my confidence up in terms of singing um and also i did piano training not to become you know a great pianist but just to make it sort of believable that i could play so general kind of technique and and those kind of things to make it somewhat believable that i could play tchaikovsky or that i could play saturday nights or other fighting um how different those two things are but yeah i think yeah so we spent about two weeks for me of doing prep for, for with taryn as well or no did you guys not uh so i i, I ran into taryn a couple of times during the prep um you know because he was obviously doing a masses of prep you know that that film is was such an undertaking for him and and he had so much to do and you know he did it with such grace and you know it was amazing but i remember the first time that i ever met him was um it was one of my first days during prep. It was my first session with, with Michael, my piano teacher. And he was just sort of introducing me to the, to the keyboard and to the, the notes and everything. And just generally kind of, it was a kind of introductory session in my trailer. And then suddenly Taron sort of pokes his head inside my trailer to looking for Michael and essentially just goes, Hi, oh, Michael, could I, uh, could I just check something with you? And he essentially just gets on the piano and starts playing your song um because he was just practicing your song and you know i think that was the biggest like painting moment at the beginning of rocket man because i was like oh my god like this is happening yeah. you know he's just he's just coming and started playing you know, he's learning your song yeah it was unbelievable for me um and taron's lovely but yeah he he worked so hard in that prep sort of um period he was doing so so much work and so much rehearsals um yeah I was completely in awe. Oh man. Amazing work. And, you know, we'll just do briefly, you know, his dark materials. Was that your first long form television experience? That was probably, yeah. I mean, I've never really had an experience like his dark materials because it was so, you know, it was just my, it's just my voice. So it was completely me voiceover in a, in a booth in London while they were filming, you know, in, in, in wales i think oh wow okay in completely different parts so so i visited the set actually once for this this coming season and it was the first time that i met anyone on the show in person it was a really wow. you know interesting moment because you know for example um you know just the, the people like you know daphne and amir who play you know um lyra and will are these characters that i'm so used to playing alongside um but just from a booth uh and we've met on zoom but it was so surreal to meet them in real life and you know have a chat with them you know they're, they're both two you know wonderful people and, and and two brilliant brilliant actors so that was really um really cool to to do but yeah i think that's the thing about his dark materials is that it's a very different experience as an actor to what i'm used to and that's amazing. Thank you for sharing that. Let's let's jump into Heart Stopper, man. You know, this is what sure. everyone wants to hear about. You know, so obviously a pandemic happens, you know, yeah. and, and the business kind of shuts down. At what point did the did you know the graphic novel or no? I knew of it actually. My sister had a copy in her in her bookshelf, so I did know of it. Got it. And and so at what point did the email or the phone call come your way? So I think it must have been probably sort of late 2020 so maybe after the pandemic started yeah yeah okay no, okay okay it, was it wasn't one of the ones that was cast and then had to shoot later no it was wow. deep into the pandemic actually okay yeah. and then we i got i think offered the role in around february of 2021 i think i would say um and we started rehearsals in late march you auditioned for the other uh, other part originally though right yes true i auditioned i auditioned for charlie i auditioned for charlie and and because it basically they offered a um it was a self-tape and they only offered one sort of scene up and it was this kind of monologue by charlie so i auditioned for it just 
I didn't really think I fit Charlie very well, but I thought that you know, it was such a beautifully written scene and you know, it's such a sort of stripped back, emotional, raw scene. So I felt that it was just something that I wanted to do. Yeah. Um, and if I could be a part of the project, then I would love to be. Um, luckily, they quite quickly realized that I would be much better for Nick. So they they switched me over quite quickly. But yeah, I think that that must have been back in around the kind of November time. But it was, yeah, it, it was it was a little while, the, the casting process. But yeah, I think I got offered in February. As it as in it was drawn out for a while, like and you had to do chemistry reads, you said, right? <laughs> Yeah, so I did one chemistry read on Zoom with Joe, which was, yeah, who plays Charlie, which was quite, you know, it's slightly strange to do a chemistry read over Zoom. Yeah, you know, it's, it's difficult it's to so read. It's so weird, yeah. Yeah, but then um, uh, then I did a, a like I said, an in-person um, chemistry read with Karina Brown, and then I did a whole group chemistry read with pretty much, you know, the main ensemble cast, and that was the first time where, we had all, it was pretty, pretty, sh- we were all pretty sure that we'd all got the roles by that point. You know, yeah. we were the last one standing. So um, that was sort of the, the beginning of, of everything, I suppose. And, and were you guys uh, lucky enough to be able to get all the scripts before shooting? Yeah, we got them all. We got them all, actually. I, I got them as soon as I got um, offered the role. And it was, which is great. I mean, it's, I have done a couple of jobs where they're very secretive with the script. And I think that that can be very, very scary almost, but, yeah. but yeah, we had all, all eight scripts, all eight episodes. I think one of the best things, one of the things that drew me to the show um, the most is actually the, the way that the script was written because obviously it was written by Alice Oseman, who's, you know, an author, but also a, an amazing illustrator. It's obviously based on the graphic novels. Yeah. Um, Alice basically wrote uh, and drew in illustrations onto the script, wow. which I found was so like so unique and so you know interesting, and and it really kind of added another layer to the script because I think sometimes scripts can be a bit boring. To be yeah, honest. no, I mean, um, it's nice to have a visual tonal reference to what's yeah, been, yeah, exactly, exactly. Even if it was just like flowers or stars or things like that, I think they were really really cool and really kind of set it aside from other scripts that I'd read. So, um, yeah, we, we were so lucky to have that. And then we had a two week rehearsal period uh, with the whole cast and with Alice and with uh, Aros, our director. And the with producers. every episode? Yeah. Wow. Um, Amazing. No, so yeah. 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 So we had um, that those two weeks before the whole shoot. And those two weeks were just, yeah, we were just drilling our characters and our backstories and also just kind of building chemistry between one another. And, I think that was a big thing. Uh, our chemistry just kept on getting better and better throughout the show. Um, but yeah, those two weeks were really important because we, we were doing even like somewhat sort of Stanislavski and yeah. sort of techniques, uh, which I'd never done for TV or film before. I found that was really fun. You know, we were doing like hot seating and things like that for our characters, um, which was really cool. Um, and it just sort of put you out of your comfort zone a little bit. So it was, it was, it was a nice stretch. Yeah. And, and, and one of the things that I love so much about you in this role and the piece altogether is like, you know, sure. It deals with elements of, of, you know, LGBTQ community, but it, it mm. just treats it as a human love story. And that's, yeah. you know, where the shift in the culture that I hope we continue to go to, you know, it doesn't, it, it, it's just, people that love each other. And so when you, when you knew Nick's journey, did you do a lot of work on the script to kind of figure out what moments kind of things started to shift for the character? Yeah. I think that, I think that for me, there were a few moments in the script that I literally circled in my script that, that where I was like, I need to get these things right. Um, There are a couple moments, especially because it's obviously based on graphic novel series there were moments that are so iconic in the graphic novel series and they're iconic for a reason because they're crucial to the characters. Yeah. So those were also just moments that I was just, you know, circling and highlighting. It was just like these I need to get right. And I said that I had several zoom calls with Aros, our director and Alice and Patrick, our producer. And, you know, I was essentially just telling them like, these are the ones that I'm really, really focusing on right now. Um, there's a scene at the very end in episode eight where I 
discuss my sexuality with um with with my mother and yeah i love that that scene. was yeah, thank you. I mean, I yeah. think that was like that was you, for me one of the biggest. So good things. in the show, kid. I mean, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, you so just much. do Nick so much justice. Um, did you did you work with a coach at all or? No, not for heart. So I mean, it, it was sort of like because obviously the cast very much sort of consists of a lot of brand like new actors who were so new to the industry and like completely fresh. Um which it was wonderful, you know, it, it sort of added this layer of just excitement and this kind of buzz that was on set and in the show as well, um, just because everyone was so happy to be there. It was their first job. Um, but yeah, I think we all just kind of felt it out. I think those two weeks were really helpful in terms of finding the character. But yeah, for me, I didn't have a coach or anything like that. I think I just sort of, I've always been the kind of actor who just likes to kind of give it a go i don't yeah. like over preparing i think um yeah. i think they, that can be really really useful for a lot of actors and, and a lot of actors find it really useful but for me i i find that i sort of get the most fresh the most sort of authentic performance if it's just kind of off the cuff and and um just kind of trusting my gut yeah so a I lot agree. of the time i would just yeah so a lot of the time i just sort of tackle these scenes um i mean i have i have this thing as well where i don't I don't like to overlearn my lines. I like to sort of go over them a few times before I do the scene. And then it sort of means the first time I do it, I'll probably stumble over the lines. But it just means that the lines really feel fresh in my mind. Authentic and really, spontaneous yeah, as, as conversations exactly. are. That's amazing. Yeah, I, I feel, you know, it's obviously not appropriate for everything. I think, you know, sometimes a character might have rehearsed it over and over in their head. So you should probably do that You're the same as an actor. But I personally feel that, yeah, that that's the kind of approach that I took for a lot of my scenes. Yeah. And earlier you made a beautiful insight that, you know, being a child actor, you go from being a cute kid to like having to figure this thing out and prove your chops. Do you feel like Nick, in some ways, you know, this would be your first role as an adult, right? Yeah. I mean, I think that, I think it's, it's a difficult thing because, every job that you do it feels you know you try and do the best you can but I think Heartstop has given me the most opportunity to um to prove myself as an actor yeah show what you can um, do it's, and you yeah. can do so much you're so good thank you so much I mean I think it's also it's it's good for me you know because one thing that you get especially as a child actor doing the kind of roles that I was doing you get so many people telling you like oh you're so amazing in this role and you're so you know, it was so brilliant. And I think that sometimes it just felt like I didn't, I wasn't able to like prove myself. I wasn't able to prove that that was true. So being able to do Heartstopper where I had a lot of like quite meaty scenes and, and quite sort of intense moments and very emotional moments. And I felt that that was a real, I was really excited to be able to tackle it and, and, sort of prove to people and also just prove to myself that I could do it. I think that was a big, big thing. You knocked it out of the park. You mean, you're so, you. I mean, so, you know, before we dig into the reception, tell me just about shooting it. Did you know as you were shooting it, like, this is working. We, we really have something special here. I think, I think, you know, when you're filming something, it always, you always have that sort of nervous anticipation where you feel like it's going great, but you know, at the same time, you have no idea you know what people are going to think because I think it was always it always felt like our little show you know it didn't feel like it was going to be shown on worldwide Netflix to, yeah. to everyone um, and it didn't feel like it was going to get the kind of reception that it would and you know it felt like the people who like Heartstopper will watch it and maybe a few more people might watch it and hopefully they enjoy it but um, yeah the reaction has been incredible but but for us I think we we did sort of we felt that what we were making was important and could help a lot of people um and was you know i think it was just a very pure show that we were making it was just a, a ball of happiness and sunshine and warmth yeah. um and we need so more of us, that yeah. in today's world you know exactly yeah. exactly i think so much of the media is so dark and gritty and negative and i think you know in, in many cases that's absolutely necessary and is a very important thing you know shows like it's a sin that have qu obviously queer representation are extremely dark and I think that it's an extraordinarily beautiful show and such an important show but at the same time I think that that 
there's a place in the world for both. Yeah. Um, and I think that the world and media in particular, uh, in particular, is almost more in need of just that 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 happy, warm sort of um, just generally heartwarming feeling um, and a more optimistic view of the world. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. And, 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 you know, tell me what, you know, before we get in the final few questions, what has it been like with the reception? I mean, just, you know, it taking off around the world, you know, everyone loves you and the show, like, is that, has that been overwhelming? You know, I mean, I know you've had success before, but I mean, has it ever been to this degree, you know, especially I'm, as I'm an in- adult now? Yeah, I mean, absolutely not. I mean, it's been absolutely insane, you know, the last few days and the last sort of basically uh, uh, since it came out. It's been a roller coaster since we first got announced, Joe and I. Um, you know, the Heartstopper fans were so excited. And then, you know, since it's come out, obviously the Heartstopper fans, have, uh, I, think, I like to think most of them have, have really enjoyed it. And, and lots of people who, who had never heard of Heartstopper before have watched it and really enjoyed it as well. And it's had such a, a a big impact on a lot of people's lives, which is 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 so so important for us as as the creators of the show. Um, yeah, I mean, it's things like being recognised. I think I always, as an actor, I've always been asked by my like friends and people that I meet, like, "Oh, do you get recognised in the street? Do you get stopped in the street?" And it was always like very, 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 very rarely. And by that, I meant like once, once or twice in my life. Yeah. Um, but now it's suddenly like daily and it's really, really, you know, it's, it's strange. I mean, it's, you can't take it for granted. It's incredible. And it's such a, such an honor that, that people recognize you, uh, recognize you and people want to come up to you and tell you how much they appreciate your work. And I think that's a, a, an incredible thing, but you know, it is also just a little, it's a bit overwhelming sometimes, you know, yeah. um, but again, like, you know, I wouldn't change it for the world. I'm, I'm so, so grateful for, for the reaction to Heartstopper and being able to be a part of it. And, you know, even just sort of the effect that it's had on certain people's lives in terms of there was one uh, Heartstopper fan who tweeted out that they showed it, showed a scene in which I, you know, come out to my mum, showed that to their parents and then used it to come out to them. And I think wow. that was like, that was such, such a, important thing for me to see because it felt that I was even even having a slight impact on someone's life like that and empowering them and making them feel safe and confident to do that I think is is really really you know sort of almost heart-wrenching almost it's a it was a very emotional moment for me Ah, it's so beautiful and it's so it's justice prevails man and I I I don't know if you can answer this or not but is there going to be another season I, I I honestly have no clue. Like it's it's one of those things where our focus right now is very much season one. We just want Got people it. to watch it and and people to enjoy it. And I I absolutely adore playing Nick Nelson and I I adore the character and I adore the show. So if I was asked to do it again, then I would absolutely say yes, and I would love to. Um, but it's really just whether or not people enjoy you know whether or not people enjoy season one. Hopefully oh. they do. People love it, man. And it, and it's so great to see someone as amazing as you rise to the occasion. And you're just so humble and kind. And you got nothing but such outstanding things in your future. And, you know, that Thank leads so me much. to my, my few final questions. You know, what do you want to do now? You know, now that you have this incredible show, I mean, I imagine, I don't know if you're with Independent anymore, but I'm, I'm sure you got your phone ringing. What is interesting to you? I mean, I think that... I mean, there's so many things that I, you know, that I'd love to do in my career. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I'd love to go back to the theater at some point. I'd love to do maybe a six, six week run somewhere. That would be wonderful. Um, you know, I'd love to, to experience that as an adult actor working in the theater would be wonderful. Um, you know, I'd love to play maybe a slightly darker role, a slightly, a slightly more twisted, you yeah. know, slightly more, um, you know, I think those kind of roles are classically for an actor, like the most kind of exciting ones, you know, totally. Ledger's Joker and Jack Nicholson and really a lot of the shows that you know, films that he's done. You know, yeah, like, the, Shining, you know, the Shining. Yeah. The Shining. Yeah. The One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Like so many, like, there's really kind of cool, cool roles that would be so interesting to do. But I think, you know, I'd love to go and go and see what America has to offer. I think America's, you know. Come on over, amazing. man. 
Yeah, I will. I I will. I, I look me up when you get here. I'm, I'm in New York, sure. so I think I'm yeah. coming this summer. I think I'm coming to um to LA this summer. So okay, yeah, I'll be, I'll be out there in a little bit. Yeah, well, let's grab coffee, be. man. Um, for sure, for sure. Uh, you know, this question is the final one, and I'm sorry, I know it's a loaded one, but you know, for all the actors listening, it doesn't matter if they're child actors or adults. You know, it's as we talked about, it's been such a dark time in the world and, and, and we do need happiness. And, you know, it's hard these days because there aren't in-person auditions and you have to do a self tape or you have to, you know, in order to get the role, you have to, you have to just nail it. You know, there's no, you don't get any feedback. So, you know, what advice would you have for actors that are trying to break in now and, and trying to navigate this, post i mean not post pandemic but the the pandemic shifts that have happened in in our business i think that you know one of the things that i always say is i mean trusting the process is such an important thing you know because i it's easy to say that you know i'm 18 years old and i've got the lead in a netflix show or one of the leads in a netflix show and it's like you know i think that's a uh, an easy thing to say that suddenly that's just happened but you know like I've, I've said today I started when I was seven years old yeah eight years old with commercials and building up and building up um, and it's just a matter of sometimes you've got to trust the process it's not something that you can just be kind of um, sort of lazy about I think it's it's always something that you've never you should never be comfortable as an actor you should never be sort of feeling like you've, you know, like you're the best actor in the world and that you should always be trying to improve yourself as an actor and trying to stretch yourself. Um, and that will make it easier to trust the process because, you know, it's going to just the, the better you are as an actor, the more you improve and the more you work with yourself, the easier it's going to become. But I think it is also just, yeah, trusting the process and trusting that, you know, if you just keep on pushing and keep on trying to achieve, you know, if it's re really what you want to do, if you keep on trying to achieve it, then, you know, you'll, you'll get there. Hey, I, I needed to hear that myself today. So Kit Connor, mm -hmm. thank you, man. You're, you're incredible. And I'm so excited for all the things that are going to come. And I'm just so proud of you, man. And it's just getting started and, and whatever's next come back on, man. And, and look me up when you come sure. to the States and, I'm proud of you, we'll brother. Do. Yeah, I'm, amazing so work, man. And thank you so much for your time, man. It means a lot. And all these insights, they were incredible. You're a great guy, man. And I'm, I'm just so... I'm just so happy, you know, man. Thank You're, you, man. I really, really appreciate that. Yeah, man. I'm sending you all the love in the world. Crush your exams. And, and we'll talk soon, okay? For sure, for sure. All right. So much love.